welcome to another episode of When in Vietnam. We are back with more interesting stories of expat life in Vietnam. In this episode, we'll take a look into the entrepreneurial spirit in Ho Chi Minh City, the financial hub of Vietnam. Let's meet one American expat behind this venture capital, which acts as a catalyst to support Vietnam startups to get ahead in the region. Thanks to technology, some startups are gradually eliminating the barriers and inconveniences people living with disabilities have faced for decades. We'll explore the story of a startup co-founded by a British entrepreneur which offers people prosthetics at an affordable price. Before learning more about these two guests, let's find out why so many expats have chosen Vietnam as an investment destination. I use it in a positive way, this is chaotic. Probably the most exciting country in Southeast Asia. Vietnam is a place that's very dynamic, so it changes very quickly. This is also a very competitive market. Vietnam's plentiful resources and economic potential make it an attractive destination for overseas investors and companies to set up businesses. That explains the increasing number of expats coming to live, work, and enjoy life in Vietnam. According to Ministry of Labor data, around 101,550 expats live permanently in Vietnam, out of a population of about 100 million. Ho Chi Minh City was voted the third best city for expats in 2022, according to a survey conducted by Expat City Ranking. The city is very friendly to expat. Young population, which is highly educated, plus uh, the country's ability now to be able to start to attract lots of talent. The biggest thing that keeps me here is the energy that the city has. I think for anybody that is big thinker, creative, inspiring, Ho Chi Minh is a perfect city for them. Perhaps unsurprisingly, over 100,000 foreigners have decided to make Vietnam their permanent home. They are a great source of high-quality human resources for Vietnam, helping to create a network of talents who can significantly contribute to the country's development, especially since Vietnam is accelerating modernization and industrialization. Every chance that Vietnam could become a robotics or tech hub of Southeast Asia. would really want to see Vietnam and Ho Chi Minh as a hub regionally with the talent that's on the ground and the growth that's in the domestic market, this can be a regional hub. So my name is Vinny Loria. I'm founding partner of Golden Gate Ventures, an early stage venture capital firm. It started with roots in Silicon Valley, but now primarily invest in Southeast Asia, specifically the golden triangle of Vietnam, Singapore, and Indonesia. The idea to open an office here actually started back in 2019, um, and that was really through the startup ecosystem. We saw a lot of startups pitching us <laughs> as a VC firm. We've been investing here since 2012, but 2019 it really started taking off. COVID hit, it put a pause on us opening an office here, but we s kept investing. We actually doubled our pace of investments just over Zoom. At some point, I got a um, entrepreneurial light bulb of, well, if I can't fly into Vietnam, what if I get a work permit and, and set up there? And then that led into, let's actually do this. Let's uh, set up a proper office. We're gonna hire a local team. Vinny Loria, an American expat and co-founder of Golden Gate Ventures, he joined a growing number of foreigners lured there because of Ho Chi Minh City's burgeoning reputation as a startup hub. I can say as a outsider who's an investor, the reason why I picked Ho Chi Minh is because I could see entrepreneurs were drawn here. It's a cosmopolitan city. It's got a lot of culture, vibrancy, art. The most attractive factor for a foreign investor coming into Vietnam is the growth. The reality is that's what we invest in. It's that change year over year. It's not about an absolute size, what is bigger. It is what is growing at a faster rate. And so for an investor coming in, we see sort of high growth and high potential and a platform that is nationally strong. It is not just based on one thing, you know, tourism or one mineral. This is Vietnamese people. And from a U.S. standpoint, Silicon Valley standpoint, 
all of that billion dollar magic is made from people. And so that is where Vietnam really shines in the region. It has this phenomenal pool of talent. Indeed, with an estimated 3,472 startups, Vietnam is quickly becoming a magnet for overseas venture capital looking to operate in an investment environment ripe with opportunity. In addition, the presence of global venture capital firms like Golden Gate Ventures increases market investment and acts as a catalyst for Vietnam startups to position themselves in the region. Golden Gate Ventures has investments in lending startup funding societies, the largest SME digital financing platform in Southeast Asia. I think Golden Gate is probably one of the top venture capital firms in the region, and so I think funding societies is honored to have them here. Uh, always quite supportive. I think that if you're a technology company that's looking to raise money, they'd be one of the first doors that I would knock on. As a VC firm, we use data, and we invest in startups that are at an inflection point. And Vietnam is at an inflection point where it's going to grow faster and faster. And so as an optimist, what I see is where Vietnam's going to grow over the next seven years. And we would forecast that within the next four years, Vietnam's GDP per capita will surpass Indonesia. That becomes very interesting for foreign investors, uh, for tech companies. Um, and so growth like that is ultimately what investors are looking for. It's, it's about that delta, that year-over-year -year growth. A 2022 HSBC report stated that the number of startups in Vietnam nearly doubled from the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic to mid-2022. In addition, the country attracted a record 2.6 billion USD through 233 private deals, up from the 700 million US dollars via 140 deals of the previous year. The amount of change that I've seen and the, the, new, the number of new investors where you start to see Vietnam kind of being discussed more as an outlier to now becoming to be part more of a central discussion as a potential technology hub. And I think that's very exciting. Um, and I'd like to see that trend continue to, uh, to accelerate into the future. Vietnam's unicorns are a new and rapidly growing business sector. Here, companies with a valuation of more than $1 billion are considered unicorns. There are currently four unicorns in Vietnam. The country is creating favorable conditions for the birth of Asia's next tech startup unicorns as the National Innovation Center, NIC, estimated that Vietnam will have at least 10 unicorn startups in the near future. Ho Chi Minh City-based Sky Mavis is best known for crypto gaming sensation Axie Infinity. In October of 2021, Sky Mavis announced Series B funding of 152 million US dollars, valuing the Vietnamese startup at an estimated 3 billion US dollars. It is now one of Vietnam's unicorn startups. We're one of the first Web3 tech companies, and we're so proud that it came out of Saigon, it came out of here in Vietnam, right? Um, and, and some of the Web3 tech that we built really is Ronin blockchain. It's our own blockchain. We're in the process of now opening it up so that we will have a, a number of major game studios deploying their own games, third-party games, brand new IP on Ronin blockchain from all over the world. They're coming here to Vietnam to, to work with us. And at the same time, we're also using Ronin blockchain to start to grow the indie studio, independent game studio ecosystem more here. So that other game studios here in Vietnam who have a creation will help them bring it to market. Vietnam now has like 20 million casual esports viewers, which is just incredible. It's one of the larger markets in the world. Um, and that's why esports is really kind of key to, to what we do and the way that we go to market. Um, you know, and when a game is building for esports, right, it's, um, it, it can be a little bit different. Um, but, but making sure that we spend a lot of time with our esports viewers and our esports players is, is re really critical to the success on the esports side of things. By 2030, 
Vietnam aims to turn Ho Chi Minh City into a tech funding magnet and target a digital economy that represents 40% of the city's gross domestic product. However, tech startups need an ecosystem to grow. Sharing the same vision, Golden Gate Ventures in May 2022 signed a cooperation agreement with the National Innovation Center, aiming at strengthening long-term relationships and supporting the development of the startup ecosystem in Vietnam. So for a Vietnamese company to grow big, they have to go outside of Vietnam. And so that would mean uh, competing with other players in other markets and competing on your home turf against other regional players. The reality is very few Vietnamese company technology startups have made that jump. So I'd love to see, and that's, as a regional investor, my optimistic hope is to partner with some of these companies and help them expand into other markets. What I can say is we're looking to quadruple our investments here uh, over the next five years. I think with the talent that's on the ground and the growth that's in the domestic market, this can be a regional hub. My name is Raphael Masters. Uh, I'm the CEO of Vulcan Augmetics, a Vietnam-based startup. Vulcan Augmetics is a startup project that manufactures an easily removable and functional prosthetic at an affordable everyday price. Vulcan Augmetics combines traditional metal frames with 3D printed plastic components. The innovative use of materials keeps the cost of prosthetics at $1,100, making them more affordable than most prosthetic arms that cost $2,600 on average. Vulcan also works with NGOs, charities, and crowd funds to provide people with their first one or two prosthetics for free. Mình đặt ra một cái dấu chấm hỏi là tại sao mà các bạn không làm ở quốc gia của các bạn mà lại chọn Việt Nam thì được nghe chia sẻ được các bạn thì muốn hỗ trợ cho người Việt Nam tại vì thị trường Việt Nam thì cái thu nhập của người Việt nó cũng thấp mà cái giá thành mà để lắp một cánh tay giả hoặc là một cánh tay điện nó cũng rất là mắc thì đó cũng là lý do mà mình đồng hành và đi với vô cần tới khoảng thời gian bây giờ. Because the big problem with prosthetics and a lot of assistive technology, it's all built as one complicated piece that you need a technician to take care of. And what that means for users is you'll buy the product and then it will inevitably go wrong somehow in three months or so. And then you have to travel back to the clinic. And if they don't have technical training, they take your product and they ship it back to Germany or Taiwan. And then you've lost your body part for like three to five weeks. So by making it modular and separate it up, it means that if they have a problem, you just ship them a replacement part and the user can change it. Đó cũng là lý do mà tại sao cái cánh tay của Vulcan nó được thiết kế theo kiểu mô đun tháo rời là có thể thay cái bàn tay này với những cái chức năng khác nhau giống như kiểu hiện tại Vulcan có đây là một cánh tay cơ bản và khi mà gỡ ra thì, thì mình có thể gắn thêm một cái uh, gọi là mô đun phục vụ cho các bạn phục vụ bàn trong quán cà phê, quán ăn và có thêm một cái mô đun nữa gọi là mô đun thích đất để các bạn có thể rèn luyện sức khỏe Bên công ty là sản xuất một tháng thì bây giờ trung bình là tầm khoảng 30 đến 40 tay. Các tay nhập về nước ngoài về có thể nắm mở nhưng mà có một số sản phẩm thì là không có xoay được cái phần cổ tay này. Nên là nó rất hạn chế cái người dùng. Còn với tay của Vulcan thì mọi người có thể xoay 360 
Đây, có thể cầm được mọi uh, góc Unscrewing the lid of a tumbler Picking up a very small item Grasping flat items like paper Amputees can easily achieve these tasks with this prosthetic arm. Vulcan uses a myosensor that detects electrical muscle activity and fits like a bracelet around the amputee's arm. It interprets the muscle signals and sends them to the prosthetic hand to give the wearer better control. Với cánh tay của Vulcan thì đầu tiên thì mình sẽ sử dụng cái vòng cảm biến để điều khiển thì mình sẽ đeo cái vòng cảm biến trước. Sau đó thì sẽ đeo phần kết nối giữa cánh tay vô cần và phần tay còn lại Sau đó thì mình sẽ lắp phần bàn tay Và cuối cùng mình sẽ lắp pin Sau một ngày sử dụng thì các bạn sẽ sạc pin qua một đêm thì nó sẽ đầy và mình sẽ sử dụng đủ trong vòng một ngày Thì sau khi bật pin lên thì nó sẽ báo đèn tín hiệu pin ở phần logo Sau đó mình sẽ bật vòng cảm biến thì khi mà mới đầu đọc bật thì nó sẽ có là màu xanh dương Khi mà mình chuyển sang màu xanh lá thì nó sẽ bắt đầu sử dụng được Khi mà mình sử dụng thì mình chỉ cần gồng lên để mình nắm lại Và mình thả lỏng để nó mở ra à, Hoặc là người dùng có thể sử dụng app của Vulcan để đổi ngược lại cái phần nguyên lý của nó là Gồng lên để mở ra và thả lỏng để đóng lại Cái đó thì tùy thuộc vào mỗi nhu cầu của mỗi người mà có thể điều chỉnh nó cá nhân hóa We actually got into the market in about two and a half years from when we started. To give some context, normally it takes about four years for a medtech product to go through the design phase, and then it takes another two years to get into market. So we did it in less than half the time. The trend of making technology responsive to our bodies is only increasing, and so we see huge uh, potential in that market. We're very proud to be a Vietnamese company. What we've built here would be very difficult to achieve anywhere else. The talent that's available here, the open-mindedness of the people, also they're quite aspirational. For me, I think there's every chance that Vietnam could become a robotics or tech hub of Southeast Asia. And the goal is like we want Vulcan to be known as a, a high quality Vietnamese brand. We want it also to be the first tech brand that is a leader in its field and globally respected from Vietnam. We'll start with emerging markets, India, Latam, Africa, and we'll build that up and use it to prepare to go into the EU and the US. Two billion people will need assistive technology by 2030, according to the WHO. This is going to be two billion power users of wearable devices and, and human-mounted hardware. So these, these people are not a burden, they're an asset. They should be people that we're looking at to pioneer this technology. No one else is going to be wearing and using these sensors eight to 12 hours a day. So they have the potential to be the ones who are leading us into the future. It really matters to building up their pride and, and sort of letting them feel that they're independent and they can sustain themselves and contribute to their families especially. Mình bị mất cánh tay của mình năm 1 tuổi do một tai nạn y tế lúc vô cần đã làm thay đổi mình rất là nhiều. Đây là mình kiểu giấu đi cái phần tay bị mất nhưng mà khi mà mang tay bây giờ đó là một cái điểm mà mình muốn người ta chú ý và nhìn vào cái đó là của mình đây là một cái sản phẩm công nghệ nó là một cái điểm mạnh của cá nhân mình chứ không phải là một cái sự tự tin nữa You just see them do things that, or moments that you didn't expect, that are enabled by your product, and yeah, that's the one of the best feelings. V 
Vietnam is in that very magical time in its history where it either grows or it grows less. Vietnam is a country where you build a moat, where you, you kind of build your competitive advantage because it's challenging for other countries to come here and compete, but Vietnam is very good at going into other countries and competing. are looking to partner with VCs to create some of that magic, some of that innovation, I think is a really good thing. As somebody who's lived in multiple countries now, you could have a place like Singapore, which could be very familiar to somebody from the US or Europe. Vietnam is very different. I, I, I'm drawn to that, I, I thrive in that. I think a lot of entrepreneurs are drawn to that sort of dynamicism. I've now had 14 years in Saigon and I've never found anywhere that feels so alive. Any hour of, of day or night you can go outside and you see people are doing things, they're interacting, they're buying, they're selling. You can, you, you never feel like things are deserted or things are slowing down. More than that, the way they interact as family units, it's very, very different from the UK. I think there's a lot more flexibility and also there's a lot more openness with their emotions. We're, we're quite a bit more sort of reserved uh, in the UK and how we interact and we're a lot more individualistic whereas Vietnamese they, they're still very strong individuals but they also do think uh, in a more community and family and clan oriented way which is something that just I don't know resonates with me. I think for foreign investors um, if it's their first time to Vietnam it, it's quite an experience even just crossing the street. To me, I love all that. I wouldn't want to <laughs> change that. Um, so I, I would say there's nothing that Ho Chi Minh as a city needs to do in order to spur more innovation in the startup scene or encourage more investment. It, 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 it's working. <laughs> and that wraps up this edition of When in Vietnam. <laughs> Thank you for stopping by. When in Vietnam, we'll be back soon with more stories.